But when does a comet become a meteor? When does a candle become a blaze? When does a man become a monster? When does a ripple become a tidal wave? When does the reason become the blame? When does a man become a monster? Looks like I'm talking about Billy today. Now, for those of you who do not know, Billy is one of the most powerful heroes within all of Ooh and is also one of the most renowned heroes in existence. Now, not much is known about Billy's prime years, however, it is particularly interesting due to the fact that he is a direct rival and antagonist to the Lich. Now, in order to figure everything else out, the first thing we actually have to figure out is his age. You see, the reason Billy is so tall and muscular is due to the fact that he is actually a mutant. His original parents and ancestors were mutated by the mushroom bomb's radiation, which which actively influenced him. Now, the reason this is actually important for figuring out his age is due to the fact that the mushroom bomb happens exactly 1,000 years before the main story. When the bomb originally dropped, the Lich would immediately be created by him possessing a corpse at the center of the explosion. After this, he would resurrect pretty much every single corpse that he could find in order to create a basically unstoppable undead army and thus the Lich's reign began. His reign would last for a pretty decent amount of time. With every single victory he obtained, his power and influence would grow along with his army. Now, I know I may be focusing a little bit too much on the Lich, but trust me, this is important to Billy's story. Eventually, the Lich would actually seclude himself in order to obtain even greater power via various magical secrets and one ritual in particular. You see, the Lich at the height of his power wanted to utilize a particular ritual in order to convert all of the magical energy and life force of everything and everyone on the planet in order to transform transform it into pure, unholy power for him to consume. Now, as you would imagine, with that much magical power, he would have literally been unstoppable. Luckily, this would actually never come to pass due to the fact that Billy would defeat him and seal him within magical amber. Now, considering around this time, the Candy Kingdom was fully built, this means that this has to take place after Shoko's death. Taking that into consideration, I'm going to say that he is either in his late 400s or his early 500s, which I feel is a pretty decent estimate. In terms of the time of which we actually meet him in his elder age. When he was actually younger, it's possible that he was only in his first 100 years. Now, contrary to popular belief, Billy would actually continue adventuring for centuries after the Lich's defeat. Now, he would eventually gain a friend and lover in the form of Canyon. However, things would ultimately turn sour. You see, after literal hundreds of years of fighting and constant battle, he began to realize that what he was doing wasn't really changing anything. Every single time he defeated one villain, someone just as powerful would ultimately show up. And due to the fact that he actually was the most powerful hero at the time, he had actively made himself a target. What this basically means is, despite how many enemies he would ultimately vanquish, he would continue to see absolute atrocities which would slowly demoralize him. He would then try to remove evil via the source by taking non-violent action, however he would eventually lose hope in this as well. He would eventually go into a deep depression where there was a literal hole in his very being. Cannon would ultimately break up with him due to the fact that he would relinquish everything that they had built a relationship on. Having completely given up on heroism as well as adventures altogether, he would ultimately come back to the Candy Kingdom one more time in order to give Princess Bubblegum his gauntlet if the Lich or any particularly powerful entity were to show up in his absence. He would remain in this depressive state for about four years until he meets Finn and Jake, who would ultimately show him the pleasures as well as the importance of still protecting the weak. After realizing the error of his ways, he attempts to make a comeback, however, Finn's negligence would ultimately be his undoing. You see, the Lich, after breaking free of his binds, was actually observing all of these events unfold and saw an opportunity. Realizing that Billy not only was weakened by age, but also didn't even possess his old gauntlet, he decided that he would actually take action in order to kill Billy himself. By utilizing the bear as his minion, he would ultimately trick Finn into giving him the Enchiridion, which he would then use to reclaim some of his lost power. Unfortunately for Billy, he would ultimately be successful. After regaining his power, he would then hunt down Billy and then personally kill him, skinning him alive and then wearing his skin as a costume. Another thing I thought I should mention is that in the dream, it is largely implied that he utilized the bear in order to to maul and consume his at the time girlfriend. However, despite this incredibly tragic end, this is actually not the last time we see Billy. In Billy's bucket list, we actually get to see him communicate with 
Finn via the stars. Well, anyway, that's all the official stuff. Now let's go into the juicy, juicy speculation section. Because believe me, we've got a lot to go over here. One question that has actually been bothering me for a very long time is how exactly Billy got the Lich into the Amber. Because there's two things here that simply do not add up. One of which is how did Billy even get to the Lich in the first place? At this point, the Lich had literally one of the most dangerous armies in existence, with literally thousands of undead warriors. Another question would be why was the Lich at the Candy Kingdom in the first place to be confronted? As we all know, his well of power is miles away from the Candy Kingdom, so there would literally be no reason for him to be there unless he needed something. My theory is that he actually required two things in order to continue his plans. One of the Gems of Power, as well as the Enchiridion, both things that Princess Bubblegum had in her possession or knew where they were. There's also the matter of the fact that literally every other kingdom was most likely destroyed by the Lich around this time. Currently, there is only two known kingdoms that existed during his reign, and it was the Candy Kingdom and Wizard City, at least as far as I know. If this was the case, this would actually make perfect sense because it means he would have literally had everything required and pretty much all he needed was the last two gems and the Enchiridion itself. However, this does not answer why he didn't just send his Legion of Undead, and personally, I believe he did. However, I believe Billy got there first. If we follow the idea that the Lich had at this point destroyed multiple kingdoms and had taken the Gems of Power in order to utilize the Enchiridion for this specific spell, it all aligns together. See, Billy has extreme connections to the Candy Kingdom and is most likely friends with Princess Bubblegum. And now he's noticing that the guy he's been tracking and his Legion is going from kingdom to kingdom and taking the Gems of Power, and all of a sudden they are going towards the Candy Kingdom. Maybe he realized the pattern and basically was able to get to the Candy Kingdom before the Lich's Legion, and when they actually appeared, he destroyed the army himself with the help of the Gumball Guardians. Now, obviously, if his entire Legion was destroyed by Billy, this would actually make sense for him to show up in person, because now there's an entity who rivals him in power that he A, has to kill, and B, has to obtain what he needs. Now, all of this would ultimately build up to a full-on climactic battle between the two. Despite being of similar power, thanks to his artifacts, as well as the mind control resisting gems, he would ultimately take the win. There's also his connection to the Enchiridion, however, considering how long this video already is, I think I'll just talk about that in the Enchiridion video itself. Well, anyway, that's all the information I have for this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, go to my other social media platforms, and remember guys, all of the ad revenue that comes from this video and every other video for the next couple days is going straight to the charity Save the Children. So if you guys can actually re-watch or share these videos, it actually helps a lot. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye.